So hello, Chef Franklin. It's Sarah Mavardi, your random host who pops in every now and again. And today I'm hanging out with Jean and Patrick over at Grow Street Auto. Um, and we're going to talk about a few things. But just to give background, uh, I love Jean. Just adore her. Uh, and Grow Street Auto has been engaged with Shop Franklin. Hey, I, and you, I didn't mean to neglect you over there. Um, has been engaged with Shop Franklin for, you know, since the beginning. I mean, I think since the very beginning, five years, and been huge advocates, you know, not for Shop Franklin, but for shopping local and being a part of the community. And you guys go way back, right? I mean, you've been here a while. <laughs> 20 years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And. Yeah, we've been literally in Franklin for our entire lives. <laughs> yeah. So you know the landscape. And aside from being wonderful people, um, you know, Grocery Auto has come to my rescue on more than one occasion. Most recently, me texting with Jean from the side of 495 when my tire blew out because I punished my son and told him he had to go get groceries to picked up with me. And so we sat on the side of the road for two hours. Not for Grocery Autos. That was AAA. Right, that so. And you're just going to uh, <laughs> yes. And so it just goes to show the beauty of you know, knowing your local business and when you need something desperately on the side of the road, who to call. Uh, and maybe my, I think what, my transmission blew on the pipe once four years ago or yeah, yeah. three years ago. That was, it was, that was scary. So, but we're here today to talk about, so shopping local and Grow Street Auto. So Jean, just talk a little bit about, like we said, you've seen the landscape of shopping local and shopping in Franklin over time. Um, why do you feel strongly about shopping local? Um, what draws you to it and how do you see it changing with COVID? Well, I think that, um, you know, having a family business, um, and I do consider this my business, even though I didn't invest any money in it. <laughs> It's been money, money. time, yes. <laughs> money isn't everything. <laughs> Way back to when you sat in my living room and said, what am I doing? <laughs> That's a long time ago. Um, but being invested in a business um, that is not a you know, large corporate entity um, definitely gives you a different perspective on what it takes to make a successful business run on a daily basis, but also how important it is to be part of the community. And when you are in a business that is in the community that you grew up in and that you are still so engaged in, um, you know, Patrick's kids are still younger, so they're still in the school. Well, yeah, they're still in the school system. They're almost out. <laughs> they're getting older now. <laughs> um, yeah, but all of that makes it so important to stay connected to the community. But it isn't even from a business perspective. It's from a Human, human perspective, I guess. You know, Patrick has always been committed to supporting all of the different school sports and um, intramural sports and just so many different things. And it's all because we're just, we're all neighbors and we're all mm -hmm. in all of this together, including the last year. <laughs> we are all in this together. So I feel very strongly that the big corporations do not need to have our undying loyalty um, and that the small businesses are the ones who care about you as a person. Well, you yeah, I love what you said about it being human because, uh, you know, in one of my last videos I talked about, you know, it's all about spring neighbors, like your legit neighbors, the person who lives next door to you. And sometimes shopping local or, you know, using a small business may take additional effort, especially now during COVID times, you know, they don't have the technology that the business businesses have, you know, not necessarily in your industry. Um, and it may take that extra effort, but you would do that for someone or something that you care about. And the level of effort is how much you care. And I know that small businesses care about our community and go so much effort um, to make sure we have everything we need. And so reciprocating that support right back. And that said, you know, Grove Street, as much as you guys are a local independently owned business, you guys have quite the operation there. And I'm getting a sneak peek into your office. And I'm always impressed. Um, you could probably eat off the floor in the garage. Um, okay. It's. I don't know if you're going to be able to. It was a busy week. <laughs> Maybe not today. Maybe you don't want to show today. Um, but you guys are actually quite the operation. It's not just, you know, the corner gas station that can do oil changes. You guys are really uh, integrated into the industry, know what's going on, and have pretty strong power to do most of the stuff that needs to get done. So tell me a little bit about that. We made a commitment a long time ago that if we, if we were going to be in business, we were going to be 
try and be the best that we could. So we spend a lot of time and energy uh, in training the guys out there as well as keeping up with the technology and staying current with the software. That's, um, that's one of our biggest expenses is the software that we need. Every month we have a huge bill for, I think it's four different companies that we have to subscribe to to get the information that we need and to be able to make the repairs that we need. I mean, we can do probably 99% of what the dealer can do because we have some of the same tools that a lot of the dealers have, the factory tools, because it's necessary now. Mm -hmm. And that brings to mind, you know, talking about the community supporting small business, you know, recently the right to repair um, vote was on the ballot, correct? And that was really important for independently owned car repair and services businesses, correct? Yeah. 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 You know, I think that the main theme of it was, you know, your car, your data. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if that bill didn't pass in Massachusetts, I mean, it's only one of 50 states, so 49 other states, it's a wild west out there, but I'm sure it'll be just like in 2013, it'll become a federal law. But if, if you don't control the data, I mean, it, it's the, the manufacturers that determine when your car gets repaired, who repairs it. Uh, so you really don't, you, you, you would lose the option to have a choice where you get your car repaired. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about the community coming together to support our small businesses, hey, maybe I don't need an oil change this month, but being aware of how I can support you at the ballot. And that just happened to come up and uh, was just really impactful for me as a non-cash transaction to support our small businesses and make sure they have everything they need to be successful. And to your point, it's expensive to keep up with that. It's not free. It is, but you know what, it, it, the guys have, they, they kind of thrive on the challenges and they, they're, they're like sponges, they're constantly absorbing the knowledge. And we had a big mm -hmm. training this week, it was supposed to be in Kansas City, but it ended up being virtual. But I think it was probably in total, they had the ability to attend, I think it was over 20 different classes, whether it be diesel fuel management or um, gas direct injection management or air conditioning diagnosis issues or the new... Uh, there were a couple classes on ADOS, which is <laughs> so it's a lane departure, it's mm. cruise control, it's all that kind of stuff. I don't know, the newer cars now, um, if you start to veer out of your lane a little bit on the highway, you, sometimes your seat will rumble, but there'll be flashes on the dashboard. There's a, we, had a, we sat through a whole class on how to calibrate that stuff now, because even a simple alignment, what used to be a simple alignment, as we're going forward now, and some cars from 2016 have have it already, but as we go forward, more and more are going to have this ADOS systems in there, and you're going to have to not only do an alignment, but you're going to have to recalibrate because the alignment angles will change the camera angles, which affects <laughs> where the, it's seeing the white lines on the side of the road, or mm -hmm. how far away, or is it, you know, just a little tip of the front of the car down is going to make it think that that car is a whole lot further away when it really isn't. And it can no, that's that line so. Up. This is good to know because my car does have that. So after my car imploded, I now have a more recent car. And to your point, yeah, like the, the steering wheel actually shakes. But then I also get the error being, you know, like collision sensor off. So that distance from the car in front of me. So I've seen that and knowing I can go to you guys locally. And also the idea of having a relationship with you guys when my car did implode. Um, you know, I remember being there and I, we were working through something. But I was like, all right, well, I need a new car now. And because we have a relationship saying, you know, what would you recommend? These are the cars I'm looking at. What have you seen in cars coming in? Why are they coming in? You know, I had a really, it was really traumatic. I was with my kids in the highway and the car was only four years old. And so wanting to invest in the right car and working with you guys gave me permission to say, you know, if you were going to get a car and you're like, oh no, don't get that one. We're seeing them way earlier than we should. Or these, this car is consistently is this problem. So it's really always comes back to that relationship. And then you guys, knowing that you guys are making the investment to know your shit, you know, like you're going to do it, you're going to do it right, and you're going to look into it if you don't have the answer. Well, to your point, I mean, we're going to see our customers on the Little League field, we're going to see them at the high school football field, we're going to see people, we, we can't be that big box company or that major chain that's <laughs> just kind of is people with numbers, we can't be that, we, it's just not us. Yeah, because if you mess up, I'm going to let you know. <laughs> At the baseball field, but you're trying to relax. <laughs> you should let us know what we're doing. He's going to be throwing footballs at his head. Yeah. <laughs> Cause a scene in front of other parents. <laughs> uh, but 
So we touched a little bit on that we're in a different environment than we once were. So with COVID, you know, everyone's, you know, we're taking precautions and businesses have to accommodate any range of customers' comfort levels. So I know Grove Street, you guys are making some changes internally and have over the course year of what you offer. You know, we talked about big businesses, you know, um, can make changes more quickly and invest in technology and have a lot of this. Um, but in the smaller site, what have you guys done to accommodate for um, people's comfort levels with coming into this, uh, the, um, the office or leaving their car and waiting, especially over the winter? So what are you guys offering to accommodate that? I got a ton of stuff. So we started with, I mean, everybody, like you said, everybody's comfort level is different. And we have some people that come in that have no mask on. And, and you know, we, we always have our masks on, but we have a piece of plexiglass in the front. Uh, we've kind of really limited now uh, who can wait. <laughs> or, or, or people mm -hmm. waiting. Our, our waiting area isn't very big, so we kind of had to really trim that down unless it's a real emergency. We don't have people in the waiting room because we just don't have the room to keep the distance. Um, we've, we've always had Lona cars. We have a fleet of six Lona cars now. They're free. Hmm. They're current cars. But um, they're out almost every day now. Before, hmm. maybe four would be out before the pandemic hit. Now it's almost every day all six cars are out because, yeah. number one, it's more convenient for people to come in, drop off, or we can go to somebody's house, leave a Lona car there, come back, do the work, disinfect the car, bring it back, disinfect the Lona car. That's, there's a ton of stuff we're going to do, but it, everybody's comfort level is different. We try and keep it to the highest standards so that even if they have a lower comfort level, at least we know it's all been done. So we have a whole procedure the guys have to do before they get in the car. Then they have a whole procedure when they're done with the car. And it's not just wiping the steering wheel down. If somebody came in because their radio wasn't working, we got to remember to wipe the radio knobs down. So everything gets wiped down all the time so that you don't forget anything. Mm -hmm. um, we have text to pay. We have pay over the phone. I mean, people don't even have to come in. Which yeah. kind of stinks. I mean, you like I to know. see people. That, that's I miss the, people. That's the, um, the downside. Yeah. But we like to see our customers. Linda, who is one of our newer employees, she's out front now. Um, it's fantastic. And we were talking the other day, and she said, my gosh, you know so many of these customers. And I said, you know what? I used to spend hours with these people. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> They'd be sitting at a, on a chair right in front of me, and we would chat. Like, mm -hmm. look we're here for an oil change. They were here for an hour, and we would talk for a lot of that time. Oh, did I just say that in front of my boss? <laughs> <laughs> he can't fire you. You're good. <laughs> but that's, it's just part of the relationship piece to it, and honestly, we do miss that, but we have mm. to be careful now, and things are different. But we do spend more time on the phone with our customers, too, yeah. than probably we used to because of that. Yeah, no, that's a great point, you know, having bigger conversations before they come in so that when they're there, you can kind of limit that. And I just want to repeat, Patrick, what you said is the loaner cars are free. Um, I mean, that's huge. And I've benefited from that. Um, I've had a loaner car a few times from you guys. And it's just so, it just makes it so easy. You know, I've had to go to the dealer for something. And my husband and I both work full time. We have two kids who are in school. I can't be without my car for a long time. And so I had some recalls on my new car um, and where they had to have it for a few days. And I had to haggle with them and be like, I need a car. This is not my fault. I can't pay $300 for a rental. Figure it out. Yeah. And like, it's just really frustrating. But so to have free loaner cars, um, and it's on demand, but as available. So you have six of them. So if you have six yeah. loaner cars out, that's not going to work. And people can schedule maybe their service uh, to, if one if they need one to be available. But you even drive it to them. Like, how amazing is that? They don't even have to leave their home, um, although maybe they want to. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I love hearing you say, like, it's not just wiping down the steering wheel, but, you know, the handle where you pull on the door, the you know, if there's a sunroof and you open the sunroof, if you touched a control anywhere, you have to make sure that you're doing that and having that courtesy. Yeah, so. yeah. even the key fobs. Key yeah. Fobs. Something you touch every day. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but that's another great point. You guys are on Grove Street. Your Grove Street Auto. Grove Street is right off of 495. So uh, generally it'll be exit 17. You just go towards Bellingham, huck a left onto Grove Street, and you guys are past the train tracks about a quarter of a mile on the right with Beleza Day Spot on the left a little bit forward. Uh, really easy to go get to. Easy parking. There's a key drop box um, if people come before hours. Um, and so if you need an oil change that uh, super easy in and out pretty much drop it off um, and then come get it and also inspections so a lot of people probably might be delayed on their inspections um, and actually patrick don't go away because i just heard something else we we're going to talk about really quickly um but so people should get their inspections and you guys offer inspections uh recommend people don't come right at the end of the month correct because normally that's a huge influx so be proactive and my father-in-law actually owned a service station for 50 years so I just remember that last day of the month he was like yeah we did like 80 inspections <laughs> um, um but to that point car maintenance Jean we talked about this and I forgot to bring it up um in COVID people are driving differently so if people have cars sitting in their driveway or they're not driving as much as they used to talk about like preventative maintenance in COVID things that people shouldn't forget <laughs> the worst thing for the yeah. car is for that if, it, if the car sits for months at a time, we've seen it here, it's starting to happen, you know, people, mm -hmm. they brought it in six months ago and they said my car's been sitting for four months, now they're bringing it in again, my car's been sitting for four months again, it's, it's not good because what everything just kind of seizes up, like the brakes get rusty if they're not expanding and contracting like they should, everything gets rusty and the, the fluid's not moving around like they should, so the hoses and belts can dry out. So the, the, the best thing you can do is drive it. Every mm -hmm. once a week, been around town, you know, 15, 30 minute drive if you can so the battery doesn't discharge on you. Uh, and that way, if you're driving it once a week and it's not sitting for four months, when you get in your car after four months and it's been sitting, you're gonna, all sorts of noises, you're gonna be scared to drive it sometimes. So if you can drive it once a week, then you'll kind of be hearing anything that develops and. You can kind of keep on top of it before a minor thing becomes a major thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't really want rodents living in your car. If you're in the driveway, it's uh, it's basically spring, lots of nesting. <laughs> I'm sure there's pictures on our Facebook page. Jeannie's usually pretty good about posting them. There'll be mostly nests, <laughs> giant nests in air boxes and chewing wires. Yeah. You yeah. Want to yeah. So yeah, I just had a friend who had that happen. Not because they weren't driving the car, but they don't have a garage and it was outside and that was not pretty. Um, you know, coming back to the idea of community is, you know, senior citizens in the community who in particular may not be going out, you know, if you have a family member who's older, who's housebound, um, or even a neighbor that you're close with or a neighbor you're not close with, um, you know, just maybe checking in on with them if, you know, just reminding them to take their car out for a ride. Um, or just offering to do it for them if they feel comfortable with that or a family member just making sure. So watching out for other people because those are already our most vulnerable population as housebound seniors and then put them in a car that hasn't been driven in a year. And, you know, we want to make sure. It, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add or? Do you want a quick tour of the shop? Yeah, why don't we end with a real quick tour? So here we are inside. So the floor, maybe you don't want to eat off of it today. I don't know. Um, but that's our alignment machine way over. Let's see if I can get my finger to point over there. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do everything backwards. It's not easy. Um, but we have so many lifts now. I think we have, what is it? Are we up to eight, 10? 12. 12. Oh my gosh. Oh. Lifts. So including the alignment machine which is right over here and you can see this big thing with the big arms on it here Turn it this way. Um, it's a computer so basically your alignment is done it's all computerized um, yeah. we could do a video just on that it's absolutely amazing yeah. um, and then the shop goes all the way down to the other end too so actually if you go on to our website there is a 360 tour that we had done by a Google company. They actually came uh -huh. in and did an official 360, and it's a lot better than the one I just did. 
So. Awesome. And so you guys are on Facebook, which is Grove Street Auto. Um, you're on Facebook and it's a Grove in red. It's your logo that we see on Patrick's shirt right there. Um, and then you're also your web, your website is, what is that? GroveStreetAutoRepair.com. All right. Well, hopefully I will see you soon. You guys stay safe. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Sarah. Thank Happy you, Saturday. Sarah. <laughs> Always. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.